Did you know one of Brentford's proudest pieces of silverware is the London War Cup, which they won in 1942. The competition was introduced during the Second World War to fill the gap left by the suspension of regular football. The tournament only took place twice, with Brentford reaching the final both times. After losing to Reading in 1941, they triumphed over Portsmouth in 1942 to claim the trophy. That's pretty amazing. But Brentford also just made a little piece of history with some of the most exciting football. Brentford have scored within 90 seconds of kickoff in four straight matches. Absolutely insane. The club is on an upward trajectory and have had truly a remarkable rise to get to this point. In this video, I will take a dive into the club history of Brentford, their recent successes and failures, and what we can expect next. If you like watching the leaves change colors in a temperate rainforest, then join the 615 white-tailed bucks and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In 1889, the town of Brentford in Middlesex was home to the Brentford Rowing Club and the Boston Park Cricket Club. Efforts to establish football and rugby clubs in the town were unsuccessful until the opening of a new recreation ground on the 17th of October in 1889. Seven days earlier, members of the rowing and cricket clubs met at the Oxford and Cambridge pub to discuss how to best use the new ground. On the 16th of October 1889, another meeting at the same pub, these folks were busy, led to the decision that a football club would be formed. The club was named Brentford Football Club and would play association football. Brentford staged its first practice match on the 26th of October in 1889 and played its first competitive match on the 23rd of November in 1889, drawing 1-1 against Q. In the 1892-93 season, Brentford entered the league for the first time, the West London Alliance. Brentford earned its nickname, The Bees, during the 1894-95 season when the students from Borough Road College, who had come to support their friend Joseph Gettins, misheard the chant, Buck Up Bees, as Buck Up Bees. The name stuck and Brentford has been known as The Bees ever since. I'm personally a beekeeper, so I love this. Brentford mostly played cup and friendly matches until 1896 when the club was elected into the second division of the London League. Brentford finished second and secured promotion to the first division. Their growing reputation as a top amateur club in London led to their election into the Southern League second division. The club moved to its first permanent home, Griffin Park, in time for the 1904-05 season. Brentford made it to the FA Cup first round proper for the first time in 1905-06, reaching the third round before being eliminated by Liverpool at Anfield. The team enjoyed a period of stability in the first division of the Southern League until 1912-13, when a poor run of nine defeats in the final 11 matches led to relegation after an 11-year stint in the division. When World War I broke out, the Southern League suspended its competition, and Brentford participated in the London Combination during the war. The club's squad was severely depleted, as many players were called up for military service or war work. However, Brentford emerged as the champions of the London Combination in the 1918-19 season, finishing four points ahead of Arsenal. Brentford chose not to apply for election to the Football League for the 1919-20 season, instead competing in the first division of the Southern League, where they finished 15th. In May 1920, Brentford and 20 other Southern League First Division clubs were elected to the Football League's third division for the 1920-21 season. Major changes came in 1926, when former Gillingham boss Harry Curtis took over as manager. Although Curtis initially struggled to turn the team into contenders, he slowly built a competitive squad. The Bees finally earned promotion to the second division by winning the third division South title in the 1932-33 season, with striker Jack Holliday scoring a club record of 39 goals. Under Curtis, Brentford continued their rise, winning the second division title in the 1934-35 season to secure a place in the top flight for the first time in the club's history. The Bees also won the London Challenge Cup that season, completing a unique double. In their first season in the first division, Brentford looked destined for relegation early on, but staged an incredible comeback, losing only two of their final 23 matches to finish fifth. 
still the club's highest league position ever. Brentford continued to overachieve, finishing sixth in both the 1936-37 and 1937-38 seasons, and reaching the FA Cup sixth round in the latter. Between October 1937 and February 1938, the club even held the top spot in the first division for 17 consecutive matches, marking the peak of Brentford's success. Following the war, Brentford returned to league football in the 1946-47 season but struggled, eventually being relegated from the first division. In 1953-54, Brentford's relegation to the third division south was confirmed on the final day of the season after a 3-1 defeat to Leicester City at Griffin Park. Brentford's first season in the third division south in 1954-55 ended in disappointment after several near misses at promotion. In 1961-62, Brentford was relegated to the fourth division. Although they won promotion back to the third division in 1963, the financial situation worsened. By 1966, Brentford was facing serious financial difficulties and rumors emerged that the club could be merged with nearby Queens Park Rangers. Fans protested and fundraising efforts eventually saved the club, but Brentford endured several more years of financial instability and fluctuating performances. The club stabilized and achieved promotion back to the third division in 1977-78. In 1985, Brentford reached its first major cup final, losing 3-1 to Wigan Athletic in the Football League Trophy Final. In 1991-92, Brentford won the third division title and earned promotion to the second tier of English football for the first time since 1954. Financial pressures continued to affect the club throughout the late 1990s, but in 1998, Ron Nodes took over as chairman and manager. Nodes led Brentford to the 1998-99 third division title. Brentford reached the Football League Trophy Final in 2001, but lost 2-1 to Port Vale. Financial instability persisted following the collapse of ITV Digital, and Nodes handed over control of the club to the supporters' trust, Bees United, in 2002. Brentford managed to avoid relegation in 2003-2004. In 2006, Matthew Benham made his first significant involvement with the club, which would eventually lead to a period of stabilization and eventual success under his ownership. Brentford's rise to the Premier League began here. This is truly a story of strategy and unique footballing philosophy, all driven by Matthew Benham. After relegation to League Two in 2007, Brentford began their ascent by winning the League Two title in 2009. Benham's ownership confirmed in 2012, saw a gradual transformation of the club. Yui Rosler led the team to the League One playoff final in 2013, but in a heartbreaking moment, Brentford missed a last minute penalty against Doncaster Rovers, which would have secured promotion. However, redemption came the following season when Brentford achieved automatic promotion to the championship. Benham's vision, along with co-sporting director Rasmus Ankerson and Phil Giles, was to employ a data-driven recruitment strategy, often referred to as the Moneyball approach. While Benham distanced himself from the exact label, Brentford's recruitment model centered around statistical analysis to find undervalued players. This model became the foundation for Brentford's success, allowing them to identify talent in lesser-known leagues. The decision to close their academy in favor of a B team in 2016 was controversial, but allowed the club to focus resources more efficiently. Their success was built on selling players for significant profits, with the likes of Andre Gray, James Tarkowski, and Ali Watkins moving to the Premier League. Despite doubts about their ability to progress beyond being a quote selling club, Brentford's meticulous planning ensured they always had replacements ready allowing them to reinvest in the squad and remain competitive. Under manager Thomas Frank, Brentford became a consistent force in the championship, finishing in the top half for seven consecutive seasons. The 2020-21 season was particularly remarkable, with the club going on a 21-match unbeaten run and reaching the Carabao Cup semifinals for the first time. Ivan Toney signed to replace Ali Watkins after his move to Aston Villa, broke the championship goal-scoring record with 31 goals in the regular season. Brentford's promotion bid seemed uncertain when automatic promotion slipped away, but in their 10th playoff campaign, they finally overcame their past failures. After a comeback win over Bournemouth in the semifinals, Brentford beat Swansea City 2-0 at Wembley, securing a historic return to the top flight. 
Brentford's promotion to the Premier League in 2021 ended a 74-year absence from the top tier of English football. Their rise is a testament to Benham's vision, the club's innovative recruitment strategy, and their ability to overcome setbacks. Brentford now stands as a model for how clubs can succeed by doing things differently, building sustainably, and preparing meticulously for the future. Brentford has taken the most from that promotion and now seem to be Premier League mainstays. In their first year back in the Premier League, Brentford pretty comfortably avoided the relegation battle, finishing 14th with 46 points. More impressively, their second year back in the top flight was a finish in the top 10 with 59 points, and they were just two points away from clinching European football. Last season was a bit of a letoff for Brentford, but they stayed around. The start of this campaign has been great for the Bees. They have had a couple of difficult matches that they dropped to City and Tottenham, but they have taken care of business everywhere else that they've had to and done it in some of the most exciting ways. As I said at the top, Brentford have scored in the first 90 seconds in four straight matches. They are also scoring goals at a high rate with 13 already on the season. So they really are must watch TV at this point. The way they've started this year off, they could absolutely be in line for another top 10 finish. And as long as they continue to make smart investments in the transfer window, I don't see why they can't find themselves in a position to shock the world like Aston Villa did last year. I'm not exactly sure what the future holds, but Brentford seem to be set up for Premier League success going forward. Brentford's journey from a small local club to Premier League competitors is nothing short of inspirational. Their story embodies the power of resilience, innovation, and unwavering dedication. From the financial struggles to data-driven success, Brentford has shown that with smart management and clear vision and a passionate fan base, even the underdogs can rise to the top. As they continue to excite fans with their dynamic play and punch above their weight in the Premier League, Brentford serves as a beacon of hope for smaller clubs everywhere. Their success proves that in football, as in life, anything is possible with the right mix of determination, strategy, and belief. The bees' buzz grows louder with each passing season, and their future in the top flight looks brighter than ever.